Hey guys, Carl here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Sony A6000 versus the iPhone 15 Pro, the positives and negatives of each of these, and which one you might want to go with if you are looking for your next camera. I hired slash volunteered my wife to film me doing some art with both of these cameras, and you can hear her take on which one she liked better. So I think because it was the first time that I'd ever picked up either camera to film, it felt much more natural for me to pick up the iPhone versus the A6000. Because I use the iPhone more in my daily life, that like getting the shots and like looking, like I could conceptualize the shots a lot quicker. And I felt like there was more flexibility using the iPhone than the A6000. It felt like because I had to get kind of in tighter spaces and I had to get on the ground, or I wanted to get on the ground and like get closer and I wanted to get overhead shots and the paint process is much quicker. I felt like I couldn't maneuver the A6000 as quickly as I could the iPhone. So the iPhone just felt like a better tool for the situation. I think it kind of depends on what you're trying to shoot. Because I feel like for today, it felt more natural and quicker and like what I was wanting to capture, the iPhone was easier as a tool to use to get in the spaces and as quickly. It just felt like I had like more options that were like quicker. I mean, I think you always want like the nicest thing that you can have, right? Like you want your shots to look great. You want your shots to like, be the best that they can be no matter whatever tool you're using. But I think for me and the type of content that I shoot, I don't really care because I care more about capturing the moment. So some of the specs and things are like, that's nice to have. I'm not choosing a camera based on the specs. I'm choosing it based on, I think, what I'm using it for. In my everyday life, like I feel like I want something kind of simple, easy to use, agile. I mean, of course I want it to look good. Like you don't want to look back on something and have it be fuzzy and ugly. And my favorite part was just being, a, was actually living it. And I felt like with the iPhone, I could do that. Like I could just be a part of it and like capture it and, and become a little more inspired by like the shots I was getting versus thinking about all of the things like, oh, okay, what, what should I do now? Or like, did that look okay? Or like, I don't know, I just like didn't have to think. I could just be within it and just like see it happen and unfold. So now that you have her take on which one she liked better and kind of the use cases that she put them through, let's dive into some of the details between the two of these cameras. So the positives of the iPhone 15 Pro, and I'm just gonna go off my notes here, I'm just gonna read off of them because I have prepared this for that. Uh, excellent image quality. It's very, very, very sharp images. They look really good. Now, there are some caveats to that though. You need good lighting and you definitely need to have, uh, like if you're backlit, or if you're really, really heavily hard light on you, it's it doesn't look great. Whereas you can control the image on the A6000, we'll get into that, but you can control the image more on the A6000. And there are apps and things you can do for the iPhone 15 Pro that allow you to do that, but for the most part, there are some, some caveats to shooting higher resolution, great photos with the iPhone 15. Uh, easy to use. As you heard from Jamie, the iPhone 15 Pro was way easier to use, switch between lenses, record, all that kind of stuff than the A6000 was. The A6000 is not meant to be a video camera. And as the iPhone 15 Pro, it's a feature within it, not the main thing for it. It does make it a lot easier for the creator to just open up an app and hit record and start recording in a great, you know, ProRes, or ProRes log. That's awesome, that, that's amazing to have. And the price point is really low to get into something like that. Uh, compact and portable. Yeah, dude, fits in your pocket. Like you just pull it out of your pocket and you can start recording stuff. It's part of the problem in society right now, but it's also really cool to have that. So uh, that's, that's definitely a, a huge positive. ProRes support, including ProRes log. That's huge. It's so awesome to have that. You know, like in the Sony phones, I think you do get uh, S-Log3 or S-Log2 in them, um, which is really cool too, because you can shoot in a log profile with those. The problem is those phones are so expensive. Whereas 999, 
for this phone right here, you get yourself a really good dedicated video camera that shoots in a log profile. So you can color grade, you get more dynamic range. The files are huge, but they're actually easier to edit because they're in ProRes. So there's some really cool things there when it comes to um, this thing in particular. Whereas with the A6000, you get just a flat neutral color profile that you can really push very little. There's not a lot of color grading that's going on there. Maybe a little saturation, a little contrast, adjust your exposure a little bit. That's that's all you're gonna get. There's no heavy color grading you can really do with the A6000 at all. Um, 4K video recording on the iPhone 15 Pro. We're in 2023. Everything should shoot 4K. And not that you need to output everything in 4K, but if you wanna crop in on stuff or if you want to, um, you know, really utilize that footage. If you need some like pans or tilts or things like that within it, and you need to crop in for that, 4K is where it's at. Plus if you downsample, you're gonna get a crisper image most of the time. Um, depends on focus and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, shooting in 4K is nice to have because you can always work on the image after the fact. It's great for stabilization, um, stuff like that. It just makes it a lot better. Slow motion recording, being able to shoot in 240 frames per second in 1080p, pretty cool. Uh, as you can see in the slow motion pick right here, it's just fun to have. It's a, it's a it's slow motion's kind of gimmicky. Uh, it's same thing, you know. It's used when when used right, it's very effective. Uh, but if you shoot everything in slow motion, it's kind of lame. But to have it is awesome, and I think that um, 240 frames per second is really cool. All right, uh, the negatives of the iPhone 15 Pro. No interchangeable lenses. Having interchangeable lenses on a camera is, I think it gives you more creative freedom to really choose, pick and choose what it is. Instead of just sliding in or adjusting like one, two, three, or two, or 0.5. I, I will say having multiple lenses on the iPhone 15 is cool. And I shoot primarily in the times two expensive. The iPhone 15 Pro is at a base model 999. That's more expensive than the A6000. You can do all these like financing plans through your carrier or it's you know $24 a month for 24 months. We live in a finance world, why not just finance it, right? Just sign up for the financing and you have yourself a phone. Don't do that, stop doing that. That's part of the problem of things. But they do make it pretty easy for you to go get a new phone. And to go get an iPhone and just start filming things with it, that's the lowest barrier to entry, I think. Especially when you can get it at these cheap, entry rates, or if you trade in a phone or sign up for a plan or whatever it is, you can get a lot for that. So that's kind of cool. Um, smaller, so a smaller sensor size, obviously a con, smaller sensor size than the A6000. Yeah, the A6000 sensor size, obviously it's not full frame, which you don't need full frame. Crop sensors are in right now. It, I don't think that matters as much anymore. Obviously lighting is gonna be a big difference. Um, you know, better low light situations will favor the uh, the A6000 because it has a bigger sensor, can take in more light. But you know, that doesn't really matter anymore. They have these these low light sense uh, settings in this phone that give you great low light um, performance. Very little light goes a long way. It's more digital than it is actual practical, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. And the fact that you still have capabilities to do that is awesome. So. I don't think the sensor size really matters as much as it used to in a lot of these things. Yeah, if you're looking at like iPhone 1 versus A6000, like A6000 wins. But if you're looking at iPhone versus iPhone 15 Pro versus A6000, it's a completely different story nowadays. Okay, so the A6000 now, positives. Excellent image quality. Yeah, it depends on what lenses you're using, depends on lighting, things like that, but yeah, Relatively great image quality is a fact. Could I go shoot a wedding with the A6000? Totally. Um, and I think it'd be fine for that. Interchangeable lenses, like we talked about before. The fact that you can put new lenses on it, huge positive. Um, affordable, it's cheaper. You're gonna be spending somewhere in the range of five to $700, depending on lenses, for the A6000. You can pick it up used on eBay, um, MPB, um, from places like Best Buy, I think still carry it used uh, or, or, or cheap models of it, which is really cool. It hasn't been, I mean, it's been discontinued, but you can still find it places. And it's definitely not a dead camera by any means. We talked about this before, but the larger sensor size, that's awesome to have on the A6000. Again, like I said, I don't think it matters as much anymore, but it is still 
a bigger sensor. So it is a positive. Negatives. And this is where we get into the same things we just were in. So um, not as easy to use the iPhone, like I just stated. My wife really loved using the iPhone. Uh, no ProRes support, obviously. Larger and heavier than the iPhone. Can't fit it in your pocket. You can, but there's some caveats to that. Uh, cannot shoot 4K. Cannot shoot slow motion above 60 frames per second. So yeah, that's really the pros and cons of each of these cameras. So to wrap this up into a bow, and give you my two cents or kind of what you should or shouldn't do when it comes, and maybe you don't listen to me, maybe you do whatever, but to kind of give you my two cents on which way, which route you should go if you're looking to kind of get something for behind the scenes or if you're a beginner or even if you're advanced and you want, and you're just looking for another camera, get the iPhone 15 Pro. It's a cam, it, it's a, it's a phone, it's a phone, it's a camera, it's a video camera, it's a cinema camera to, in, in some extent. It's got, notes on it, it's got white balance features, it's got, I mean, you can't go wrong with the iPhone 15 Pro. If I'm gonna spend money in 2023, it's gonna be something that I can do a bunch of things with because money obviously doesn't go as far as it has in the last three years and things are getting tighter and harder to, to do for society and I'm not gonna go into detail on that, but I think that the iPhone 15 Pro, if you're trying to just start off on YouTube, Lowest barrier to entry would be the iPhone 15 Pro. You can set it up, buy a light, buy that, and spend, you know, you could spend probably 1500 bucks and have yourself a bitch in YouTube set up. You know, one light, um, one light, a mul multitude of different lenses and things like that with this camera, being able to shoot in ProRes, um, being able to shoot in log, slow motion, 4K, you can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong. Great photo camera. I mean, yeah, you can't go wrong with it. So hopefully you guys got something from this. Hopefully I see a bunch of people. I don't know how many people watch this, but hopefully I see a lot of people start a YouTube channel with an iPhone 15 or maybe even a 14. I'm sure that those are great too. So that's all I got. That's my rant for today. So I'll say it again. The best camera is the one that you have with you. The one you can just pull out of your pocket and start shooting with. A lot of times it's gonna be your iPhone, just the way it works. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you got something from this. Hit that thumbs up if you did, and maybe comment, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.